everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com with my art journaling feature and this one I've titled Live, Laugh, and Love. And I'm going to start off by apologizing by going so fast but I wanted to fit this in and also narrate for you. I'm starting off with Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I've cut that to 8.5 by 8.5. I'm using the smooth side and I've taped that down to my glass surface. I'm starting off by doing some collage. I have a French dictionary that I've had for a really long time and I'm just tearing down the sides. I like to have rough edges when I'm putting paper down and once I have my strips in place I'll tear those apart. So I've put some gel medium. This is soft matte gel from Prima. I put it on the back of the paper also onto that watercolor cardstock and then I use my brush and go back over the top. I'll only be putting a few pieces down just to give a few little words here and there that we'll be able to see later through the collage. I'm also using some ephemera, the Expedition from Tim Holtz, and I've picked out a few pieces to put onto my collage. And I really want to let you know I'm doing just a free-for-all. I have no real plan for this except for pulling something out and then putting it down. And I also want to remind you that the soft matte gel acts as a glue. So this is a really good base for all your paints and your papers. So I'm just gluing down my little pieces. I kind of arranged them in the beginning if you saw that and now I'm just placing them back on and I'm doing the same. I'm adding some of the matte gel to the back of the paper, also to the watercolor cardstock and then I'm running my brush back over the top just to seal that up. I've given my matte gel a chance to dry a little bit and right now I'm using some gesso with a little bit of water and I am whitewashing. I don't want to cover up all of my pieces but I just want to give them about an even layer of the gesso just to whitewash to where you can still see the words come through and some of the numbers from the clock. If you get too much of your gesso onto your thing you can go back over with a baby wipe while it's still wet and wipe some of that away. By diluting your gesso down you don't cover up everything completely. At this point I'm using some paint and these are by Pentart and these are a semi-gloss paint. They're an acrylic paint and this is the first time I've used them so I have put down some paint and now I'm spreading it out a little bit with a baby wipe just until I get used to the colors being down. If you're like me when I first start with color it seems like so bright and I'm, I'm just more of a muted tone person so I start off light and then I go in and continue to add color and I get bolder and bolder as I go. So that was a peach color that I just used. Now I'm using straw and I'm just blending these in over top of each other until I kind of like the arrangement that I'm going in. Okay, here I go with muting my colors down. I've chosen some white and now I'm blending in the colors. And the white does help transition the colors between each other. And I'm just laughing at myself that, yeah, I'm trying to lighten it up once again and mute those colors out. I've let my paints dry and now I have my leaves stencil from Simon's Stamp and also some light and fluffy modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop. And I'm just stenciling on these leaves onto this lower right corner. I have left a complete supply list down in the description box below if you want to know of any of the products that I'm using. The next stencil I'm using is Tim Holtz Number Stencil. Again, I'm using my paste, my light and fluffy paste, and I'm just adding that to just a portion of the stencil. I'm not using the entire stencil. I'm going to let these dry, and then I can go back in and add some circles. This is where I'm going to start getting bold with my colors. I'm using my Distress Crayons, and again, I have those down in the description box below, the colors that I've chosen. I keep grabbing so many different colors I don't know if I can name them all. I believe that one's tea stain. And I'm just grabbing whatever colors I think would look good together. So like I said before, I really have no plan for this. I'm just adding in colors, ones that I know that will stack on top of each other and create new colors, especially like your blues and uh, yellows. You get really nice greens on top. This is where I encourage you to use a color palette that you really like and use your crayons and the color selections that you have. These are really, really forgiving and it's really easy to work just with your finger. I also keep a baby wipe handy. If I feel like my finger is not sliding on the paper, I just touch the baby wipe just to get a little bit of moisture and then I can go back in and smooth with my finger. 
I'm starting to get some really nice color now as I get a little bit bolder and starting to allow those colors to be more concentrated. And I really still have no plan on what color I want where. I'm just going with it. I want to add a little dimension around my paper pieces. So these are the pit pens and I have the brush tip point that I'm using. So I'm just laying down a little bit of that ink and then rubbing it with my finger. These are India ink and there is some drying time and play time that you have with these. So they're really fun to use as an outline and then smudge. And they do dry permanent in about five minutes or less. To go around my number stencils, I'm using the big brush, and this is a stamper's brush also from Faber-Castell, and this is a gray color. I don't want a really dark color, I just want to give a little bit of dimension so the numbers look like they're popping up from the page. I'm safe to remove this from my glass so that I can get around to these other circles that are at the top. Again, I'm going in with my fine brush pen, and that's the pit pens, and I'm just getting a little bit of dark color just to the side and the bottom of those circles. As I sit and do this in real time, this is very relaxing for me. I know it seems a little hectic because it's sped up, but this is the fun part where you're just outlining and just creating shading around all the elements on your page. Next, I'm using my big stamper's brush, the black, also from Faber-Castell, and I'm outlining some of the ephemera that was put down in the beginning. And this will start giving me a lot of great depth to this page. One of the last things I want to do is to add color to my leaves. And I do, I do know this is peacock feathers. And I'm just adding a little bit to the bottom of the leaves. I'm also using that baby wipe to get my finger a little bit wet so I can smooth that around. Okay, I'm getting bolder with my color. I'm going in and adding some darker colors around the edges and also just mixing in so that I get it some really nice mixes of colors. I'm giving this a couple shots of sprays from the Tim Holtz water spritzer so that I can pick up some of the color and get some dots of color. That is what's so great about using the Distress crayons and also having layers of paint underneath. To finish this off, I am using my archival ink and I am smudging onto the edge so that it has that same feel as I used with the marker around the ephemera. And this will also go really nicely once I put it into my black journal. So I'm just rubbing that ink pad onto the edges and then using my finger to blend that out. It's time to add my title and I have put these into my Tim Holtz stamp platform. And I am using black archival ink once again. And I've placed my stamps to where that laugh will sit right in a nice flat space and then live and love are on a little bit of a bump. So I know that I'm going to have to go back over a couple times just to make sure that I have those inked. When you're stamping in an uneven surface, this is when your stamp platform comes in really handy because it holds everything in place. If you still can't get it, it's okay. We can use the pit pen to fill in the letters. Here's a look at how my page turned out and I've put it into my black journal. I also like the areas of the ephemera where I think I'll add my journaling. I can write in a circle all the way around the clock or just write through the clock. And I can use my pit pen for that. I think one of my favorite things about this page is the depth that I got using the big stamper's brush pens around the stenciling and also around the ephemera. I hope I've given you some inspiration to just go for it and just do your art journaling page the way that you want to. And as always, thanks so much for watching.